guys, it's Danielle from Blissful Domestic, and today we are in the kitchen cooking. Um, a lot of you guys have asked um, how we do a Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, today, or yesterday, um, I have a post on how we got our turkeys, so you guys can check it out there on the blog. But we were able to get two turkeys this month for free, and so you can find out on my blog how we were able to do that. So I've already done the cleaning of the turkey. We, we thawed it out just so you know, FYI, a turkey takes about two days to thaw out um, if it was frozen solid. Um, and what we did is that we left it, I took it out in the late afternoon and put it in the sink of cold water, not hot water, cold water. Um, and that slowly thaws it out just again so that you know. I know a long time ago, like when my parents were younger, you know, my dad used to just put ground beef on the counter and thawed out that way and they've actually said like hey that's not a good idea to do it actually bacteria can grow because the outer layers of the meat heat up before the middle or become room temperature before the middle part has thawed out so just FYI don't thaw your meat out that way uh, you can thaw it out in the uh, in the sink in cold water or you can do it in the fridge the fridge will take a little bit longer but so it takes about like a day and a half two days depending on how big your turkey is um, but you can you know press the turkey you can tell if it's thawed out so ours took um, um, a little over a day and a half, almost two days. Um, ours is a just almost 20 pound turkey. And you can see I have mine in a cooking bag. The reason I do a cooking bag is because it cuts the cooking time in half and I figure that's less time running the oven, so why not? Um, I also have already cut all the vegetables and I will let you know what we're putting in our turkey, but I've done the cut of the vegetables and done the stuffing. And okay, so you can see I have a bag of vegetables here. These are all the scraps from the things I cut up to put in our vegetable mixture. We're using leeks today, carrots, celery, and I just happen to have some tomato in here because this was an, an older bag of frozen vegetables. So you will put these, all your scraps in here. You can throw them in the freezer and you can continue to add to it. Once you have a full bag, you can put this in your crock pot and fill the rest of the crock pot up with water and then it will become vegetable broth. It's just a free way to make something that really a lot of people would just throw away, but you can make vegetable broth and you can freeze the broth in freezer safe containers, or you can can it. So that's just another option, something we like to do. I'm gonna toss that over there. Okay, so to start out, we're gonna talk about seasonings for the turkey, and we keep it pretty simple. If it was up to my husband, we'd probably have a lot more seasonings, but then he'd be the only one that could eat it. So. We use Laurie's seasoning salt. Probably the one seasoning that I do buy, name brand. Um, honestly, because they sell it inexpensively at Costco. This is also the seasoning I grew up on when my father used all the time. We also use poultry seasoning, which has thyme, sage, marjoram, rosemary, black pepper, and nutmeg in it. We're gonna use some sage. And we like to use paprika. Paprika is really good to put on top. That's how you get that like nice brown, like little crust kind of thing going on on the top. And this is uh, paprika will help that happen. And then we're also going to use some oil. Um, you can use any type of cooking spray that you have. I happen to use a Misto. I got it from Amazon for under under 15 bucks. And you constantly like, you can refill it with any type of oil. So soybean oil olive oil, vegetable oil, all that stuff. So this is what we use, and it's pretty awesome. So we're gonna start seasoning the turkey first. Again, I already have it in my bag, and when you're using a bag, you wanna put a handful of flour in there, give it a good shake, and that's gonna make it so that your turkey does not stick to the bag. So to start out, um, you're gonna take your cooking spray, and you're just gonna lightly spray the top of the turkey. Um, if you, or some of you like to rinse your turkey really, really well. We give it a little rinse, but um, I don't want, you know, the junk from turkey to get all over the wall. So I prefer to use the oil, and it just gives it a better taste. And that is our oven that is preheated. You should preheat your oven once you kind of are ready to assemble your turkey. You're preheating it for, or at 350 degrees. So with this one, it's a self-pump, so you have to pump it to get the air going in there compressed and then I'm just going to lightly spray the top of my turkey and this gets me gotta get a little creative with it because you got the the bag going on and you can get the legs 
and stuff too. Just kind of pull your bag back. If you are someone that's kind of a germaphobe, which I kind of am, just, you know, after, just know you can rinse everything down with soap and water and get off whatever turkey juice or whatever has gotten on your stuff. Okay, once you've done the oil, then I like to always start with Lari's. You can see I keep a lot of my seasonings, the ones that we use pretty much almost every day. Um, I keep them in mason jars, and that's just because I like the way it looks. So, what I'm going to do is I actually am going to grab, not that one, where are you? A little measuring cup. Just kind of helps since I don't have the sprinkle thing, and I don't want to stick my whole jar into the cup. Okay. And I'm just taking a little bit, put on there. I'm, we're pretty generous with our seasoning salt. It's really a personal taste. And so you're going to go in and you're just going to sprinkle this all over your turkey. You could do this before you put it in the bag, but I find it's very hard to get in the bag. And sometimes the seasoning can get rubbed off and stuff, and I don't like that. So just give it generous sprinkling of lard salt, and you can kind of go over with your hand and just kind of pat that stuff in. Okay. I'm gonna, okay. And in general, when you cook, if you're using raw meat, I try to just do it with one hand, so I know this is the hand I'm not gonna touch anything with. Um, Cause this is the hand that actually touched the meat. So, same thing, using my measuring cup, I'm gonna sprinkle my poultry seasoning in there, and I'm probably using maybe four tablespoons. But I will link the actual measurement below. Actually, I don't think that's where this one is. Come out. Let's see. Sorry. That's actually like one and a half. I overshot that one. Okay. So you put your poultry seasoning on top. Yum, yum, yum. Same thing with your hand that's touching the meat. Which actually, I guess I touched this, so just I'll give all my seasoning jars a good clean afterwards. Okay. Next, we're going to use the sage. And again, I'm just going to sprinkle it into my measuring cup. I'm going to sprinkle it all over my turkey. Okay. And then the last thing is the paprika, just a sprinkle on top of the turkey. Okay, give it that nice, nice little brown. Okay, and then kind of rub in your seasoning so it's staying on the turkey and as it cooks, it'll mix with those juices and taste oh so good. Okay. Now that that part's done, I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to move my seasoning so I can rinse them off afterwards. Now that my hands are clean, I'm going to move on. So in general, I know most people just do a stuffing. For me, I like to do a stuffing and then like a veg vegetable mixture around the turkey, mainly because if I can get most of my cooking done in the oven in one little bag, that's just less time that I have to spend in the kitchen on Thanksgiving. So I try to do as much prep work as I can. So for the stuffing, what I've done is that this is just one box of stuffing mix, turkey stuffing mix, and I like to actually go a little bit on the dry side with the stuffing because once it goes into your bird, it's going to soak up all of those juices from the turkey, which make it taste really yummy. So in our stuffing, I put, so one box of stuffing mix, um, four celery stalks. And I do three huge handfuls of dried fruit. Today I'm doing raisins. In the past I've done craisins, which is also really yummy. I just like that extra sweetness that the fruit gives it. And then the same seasonings that I'm using on the turkey, the sage, poultry season, paprika, and lari's, I'm going to use in my stuffing. And I just give it a generous, I'm pretty generous with the, the sprinkling. It's really a personal taste. Um, but those are the seasonings that I use that just make it taste really yummy. So using the spoon, you're gonna start filling your turkey cavity. Now, um, 
husband or my husband and I just saw a show where they did stuffing underneath the bird. But for today, since I'm showing you how to do it, I'm going to go with what I've been doing. Um, and I just stuff as much as I can get into that turkey. And so just using the spoonful, just shove it in there. I find it's easy to just kind of scoop it in and then push it to the back with your spoon. Um, you, of course, can use your hand. Um, I remember growing up, my mom, I know I just talked about how she doesn't typically cook, but she always did Thanksgiving. And so she's actually the one who taught me how to make a turkey because I used to, I think that was before bags, because we used to get up really early because we would have to cook all day. And so I would get up with her and I would help her and she just showed me how she did it. And from what I remember, she always did her stuffing a little bit on the dry side too, so it absorbed that turkey juice. And so this is kind of, you know, that's how mom did it. And so that's how I do it. And so just keep as much stuffing as you can fit in there. And since this is a pretty big bird, I'm going to be able to get that whole box of stuffing in there. If you are someone who you're having a lot of people over to your house, you might want to make additional stuffing just to cook regular on its own in the oven. Um, but for us, this should be more than enough. And let's see, I've got a little bit left to go. And again, I will link or put all the recipes down below. Okay, so now my stuffing is in there. I'm going to put my bowl to the side. And now the last thing that I need to do is I have a huge bowl of what's in here. Um, one leek, three carrot sticks, you know, the long ones, the... Uh, uh, what is it? Like the unskinned, the, the long carrots, the whole carrots. Um, three russet potatoes, um, four socks of celery, and I have two gala apples. On top of all that, I have again the same seasonings. I'm keeping the seasonings going throughout. Um, the Lari's uh, poultry seasoning, sage, and uh, paprika and I went a little bit lighter because these are going to go in the turkey and the turkey already has all that seasoning and stuff going on. I did add um, a fourth a cup of brown sugar and just kind of coated that a little bit on everything. What that's going to do is it's going to help bring up that sweetness in the gala apples. So as you eat the turkey and your sides you're getting that savory and sweet together that just is awesome together. So now with this I'm going to end up putting this all around the turkey, so as the turkey cooks, this stuff actually kind of boils and is boiling slash steaming um, in the turkey juices. And so those potatoes, those carrots, all that, it's going to absorb that turkey juice, that broth, it's going to be amazing. Um, you can also, if your cavity, if you have a little bit of space from where your stuffing is, you can put a scoop or two in there and it'll be awesome. So we're going to scoop it in. I also added some dried onions to the mix mainly because um, I have regular onions, but I just, when I cook onions, I cry and not like a glistening tear, it's like insane. And I did not feel like doing that right now since I already had to cut the leeks. Um, so I just added some dried onions, which will also absorb that turkey juice and just be awesome. So we're gonna scoop all of this in here and um, I'm using my own turkey roast pan. You can also use the ones from the store. The ones from the store are kind of nice. It just makes the cleanup quite a bit easier. Um, so just kind of going with, you know, what you have. If you have in your budget to go use the reusable turkey pans. Um, my turkey pans that I do have from Costco, they were not quite this big, and I didn't think that they'd be able to hold everything, so I went with my own turkey pan. And even if I run out of room, I even start kind of putting it on top. My turkey has an automatic, the timer that pops up when it's done, which I really like. If yours does not have that, just a rule of thumb is a turkey should be, the internal temperature should be 180 degrees. Um, and just using any type of meat thermometer is going to let you know what's going on there. But you just really want to make sure that middle is cooked so no one's, no one's getting sick. That's just something you don't want to give your guests. No sickness. Okay. We're just about done here. I just have one more little scoop. And you see, mine's pretty 
it's, it's overflowing here. Make sure you can see it in the video. And so now, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take it all. We're going to kind of shoving it in on the sides to make sure it all gets in there. And I'm going to twist. Oh, actually, hold on. Just joking. My turkey has that little leg holder. And so keep the legs closed. And so I'm going to just kind of close those legs real quick. And then now I'm going to use my little zip tie that comes with it and I'm going to close it. And you just want to close it nice and tight. And then you're going to add two slits and that's going to be, you know, to let the, let the steam out. Um, so your bag does not become like a balloon and pop. So just again here, I'm just adding a little slit. Um, you can do two or three. Actually, I think I'm doing four, so three or four, just to let that steam out. And now you're going to put it in the oven for a 20-pound turkey. It takes three and a half to four hours to cook. Because I have it stuffed, you need to add an extra hour. Um, so four and a half to five hours. And, but you have all the um, times on here. Let me see. Is that right? No, actually, correct that. A 60 to 20 pound turkey is three to three and a half hours stuffed. So about three and a half hours till our turkey is done. And I'm going to pop in the oven at 350 and it's going to cook for those three and a half hours. And I will show you whenever it's done. All right, guys, it's been four hours. And you can see the turkey is beautiful. Um, my bag actually stuck a little bit on top. That's because I forgot to baste it in the middle. But as it's cooking, you can pull it out and you can periodically baste it. Um, I actually forgot to then. That's why it got a little, little darker on top. But you can see it has the pretty color. And this one had the on Mac timer. So you can see how it popped out. And we have our own meat thermometer that we went through just to double check. You never can over check poultry. You just always want to make sure. And so now I'm going to scoop out the stuffing and the potatoes to serve and I will make some gravy. I know some of you guys were asking why don't I make gravy myself. That is mainly because the stuff that comes out of the turkey, that neck and the other stuff that you can make gravy out of, it totally repulses me and I just don't make gravy because of that. So that is why I either use a mix or go with the store-bought kind. Um, so there you go. That is how to make a Thanksgiving turkey. I hope you guys like this video. And if you're new to this channel, hit that button and subscribe. And have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys.